Okay. Thank you for inviting me in this uh, great audience. And what I would like to speak tonight is basically I want to share my story, a journey or exploration about spirituality and how I integrate science in my spirituality. My journey in the spirituality started when I was in Indonesia. We live in a small, uh, big family. It's a poor family. And at the time when I was in high school, I was attracted with a group of people that show almost a supernatural power. Yeah. They learn how to protect themselves through their mysticism group. So at that time, I was a friend with that group and joined the group for around seven years. And on that group, I learned, and I know that group, uh, they call it as a Japanese mysticism. So I was involved with the Japanese mysticism for seven years. And I learned how to transpose the spirit so basically, psychologically, you can basically uh, your consciousness can move out outside your body, and then you can see your own body, and then you can learn from that experience. And from time to time, you can also invite other consciousness and input it on your body. At that time, we call it as you, know, you took your other people's spirit and you put it on your own spirit and then you can walk and talk like what the person even if that you never met with that person. For seven years I was involved and I thought that that's my uh, make my life is closer to God and learn about God and that's on uh, when I was a junior high school. Until one day I was invited by a friend to came to a small group in a house. And that's my was the first time I came to that house. And on that meeting, actually it's a Christian meeting. It's a, like a, a house a church, basically. So I sit there on the floor, it's around 100 people, probably. And then after they have a sermon and talking and finish, and then a woman stood up and said, I got a vision from God. And there is a young man that involved with the black magic in this place. And then two people came to my seat and laid to their, uh, my, uh, their hand to my head. And then they say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out the demon. I felt like something moved out from my body. And I felt something come out from my body and suddenly a new consciousness came. I was crying like something gripping me and suddenly when they stopped praying another power just gripping me and I felt another consciousness feeling of anger feeling of frustration and I was screaming and everybody's scared and then some people came and then laid their hand to my head and cast out the demon and I felt whoa like that and come out something and I was crying like baby when they stopped praying another another power came and new consciousness came and I was angered. So come in, come out, come in, come out like that. So finally, one person close, uh, approached me and said, hey, do you have a chance or a mule need to be get out and burn? Because it's very difficult to uh, get out the spirit inside you. So I said, yes, I have a mule. And when we fasting, when I was involved with that black magic, uh, we fast for four days or at night, you know, you don't, you don't sleep for uh, uh, a night after you fast for four days and then you got something and then they took it from my house and they burned it. And through that, I was free. So at night, I went home and suddenly I was gripped with a certain unconsciousness, a power that I cannot, you know, go anywhere. I try to, there is a mind and like a voice inside my mind and say, you have to walk there. So I walk over there and suddenly another voice and you are there. And I went there and another voice and went there and I cannot control myself. It's like, oh, what should I do? And at the 
that time I was crying. God, I called God. God, I don't know who you are. Please help me. And suddenly, peace came to my heart. And at that time, I was praying and said, Lord, I don't know what happened in my life. Please help me. And I saw a Bible that distributed in school. Yeah. So, a small Bible. So, I just took it, that Bible and said, God, if you really live, what happened in my life? Please answer me. So, I opened that Bible and suddenly in Colossians chapter 2, 3 and 4, like talking to me. When there is a question in, inside my head, and look like the first jump and talk to me and I feel peace that night so I slept, I felt like somebody beside me so the next day I went to my friend and told my story Yo, I went to the Christian and suddenly boom, my power is gone and they asked me, how many people are there? what's around 100 people? see, you are only alone and there are 100 people over there of course you were defeated you need more power yeah, that makes sense so I planned to go and went back to my guru to get more power to fight with the Christian. But I'm thinking, hey, I already broke the law. Because when I joined the magic group, you have a law. One of the law is you cannot share the magic word. So I share that. You cannot burn the charm. I burned that. So I was confused whether I went back to my guru or go back to the Christians because I'm not sure. So what did I do at that time? Finally, I'm thinking, hey, what should I do? Ah, the best way is, anyway, every human being one day will die. So, it's better if dying as just following the crowd. So I made a balance how many people join that mystic group and how many people join the Christian. So I made a balance and I thought that it's Christian, Christian is more people. So I went there and went to the LED and asked, you know, I was very confused. I'm afraid that I'm dying. Don't worry, don't worry, just came here. You know, Satan is usually just you know, bothering you. We will clean. How? Just came here. For what? Reading Bible. What? <laughs> just reading Bible? Yeah, my life is threatened, but you just say reading Bible? Yes, just came here. Out of fear, I went every day to their house and read Bible every day. And I grew. And then joined another group. And I saw on that. In 1979, there is a huge youth movement among a youth group that suddenly, in a very sudden situation, a lot of people converted into Christianity. And I was, so joined the group and then we planned, planted a small group and grew as a Christian movement all over the world until today. And in that process, we started Bible school, we started church and many different kind of things. And then one day I felt, hey, I need to study in the U.S. Make the story short, I went to U.S. in 1987 with $65. And the first two years, believe it or not, we kneeled down, prayed, and asked God to provide money to study and maintain my student visa. $65. How God helped me at the time. Yeah. There are many stories. A good example, for instance, one day, I had no money at all. And suddenly a person, a student, came to me and I said, Do you have money? No. He gave me $1,500. And I said, What? Why you give it to me? I don't know. I just feel inside my heart that I need to give money to you. <laughs> You're crazy, you a student. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got inherited from my family, and I don't know why. You know, just God spoke to me, and need to give it to you. Huh? You are right. What are you asking? You give me a right time. Yeah. I tell you, that's the largest amount of money that I ever received until today. 1500 when at that desperate moment I don't have money, I cannot pay the rent. Oh, yeah. Make the story short, the first two years I live just literally by faith. If I don't have money, I pray and God in some way, you know, use many different occasions 
from one day, you know, we go by car, uh, and then somebody hit from behind, and through that, I got 3600, because I don't, yeah, 3600. <laughs> <laughs> he said that you, do, you need to go to the chiropractic, and, you know, and I did not know at the time that the, the insurance swing is other, but the process is just somebody called me, a lawyer, they call it, and then they say, you want to sign this one? What is this? I was scared. You know, we go to the doctor and no pay and we got no money. You want money? Yes. And then I sign. I got 30, yeah, almost 3,000, 3, 2,800. At that very moment that I need money. So, make the story start here. Finally, I finished study in private school. Three master degree with one PhD with no debt. Yeah. And that's now my journey switch from the spiritual journey. I went to study science. And one of the scriptures that really inspired me is <laughs> come on, I got <laughs> Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, as a scientist, my question is, God, you said that this is the most important, the greatest commandment. But as a scientist, I need to observe how to love the Lord, how to operationalize that. How I can say, because in, in, in the U.S. it's very funny, yeah? Everything is love, yeah? You like hamburger, you say, I love hamburger, and I eat hamburger. <laughs> You love KFC, you eat KFC, right? <laughs> and then you love your wife, you eat your wife? No! You know? you love everything is love! You know? I love your shirt, I love your unit, love. So my question is, God, how, you know, I can operationalize that, which one is the healthy love, which one is more dysfunctional love, how to do that? And that's bring me also on the second day. So, next, so you can see that. I learn now, from school, I learned about John Baldwin. When he tried to study about how to compare between uh, children, that one become dysfunctional and one become, you know, functional. And he studied, he learned that the most important relationship in human relationship is parent and child. When child and parent loving each other, that will be internalized. The experience will be internalized by the child. And scientists try to understand that what kind of pattern of relationship we call it love or attachment. Einstein found at that time among children, among baby, or I mean two years and toddler, and they found, she found that there are three different kind of style of loving people. One we call it secure, second will be anxious, and then the third one will be avoided. I will explain more about that. And then Hassan and Shepherd try oh oh not yet. <laughs> Hassan and Shepherd try to repeat that three attachment into a close relationship, romantic relationship between adults when you love each other, you know? They have similar pattern the way you love. Yeah. Next now. <laughs> and then come on. Bartholomew, yeah. He found that there are four different kinds. There are many different uh, researchers also, but we found there are secure individuals that basically say that, you know, I'm okay. You are okay. That's we call it secure. Okay. I'm okay, you are okay, secure. I'm okay, you are not okay. We call it avoided. I don't need you. <laughs> if you fall in love, I miss you. I miss you. But I don't need you. I cannot speak to you because I'm okay. You are not okay. <laughs> Avoid it. Okay? Now, anxious and ambiguous, ambivalent, that's a different kind of love. How you love it? You are okay. I'm not okay. I need you. I need you. It's clingy. If you fall in love, honey, I miss tonight. I will be with you. <laughs> okay, honey, come. Hey, honey. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. 
When you far away, I miss you. When you close, I hate you. Yes, anxious and confused. Anybody like that? Jealousy. That's obsession. You know? <laughs> this is fearful. Uh, fearful avoidance will be confused. Yeah, confused. I'm not okay. You are not okay. Next. So you can see that. Now, uh oh, come on, come on, wait, 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 wait. See, see, come on, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how long I have to finish that. Okay, see, I'm okay, you are okay. See, seeing ourselves is I'm okay. Seeing others is okay. And then this disappointment is I'm okay, you are not okay. This one is you are okay, I'm not okay. This one. I'm not okay, you are not okay too. <laughs> Please. Please. Okay? Now, default. This one is like a filter, like a glass. Based on your relationship, loving each other people. And you put it this one, everything will be figured out based on what you see. Your filter. A good example how you love God is depend, there is a correlation depend on your with your parent and the way you love your significant life that will create a different system. Next, you can see that. Just quick, for instance, just quick, continue. Okay, this one. Continue. Okay, just quick, quick. Okay, secure, for instance. Big Patrick studied that and we found they view God as a loving God for secure person. And they see that God is close to us. They are less distant. I can approach God. Because God is okay, I'm okay too. If you need help, you just come to God. If you don't need God, you are nothing. It's okay. Yeah. And this is the most religious person. Yeah. Healthy spirituality. While this one, and she's ambiguous, they see God is not loving. I'm afraid of God. Far away. That is why I have to be praying fervently because I'm not sure whether God answer my prayer or not. I'm not okay, you are okay. <laughs> this one, when God in the world, when, for instance, the way they express spirituality, they will, a person that speak in tongue very quickly. Yeah. If there is a conversion, for instance, come. This person is just come at the first time. I need help. And you know, smile in the spirit and pray like crazy. This one. Okay? But this is avoidant, very interesting. If you got as a positive God, I know God is good. But I don't want to join, I don't want to express my spirituality. I don't have this. I don't care. I ignore the spiritual world. What is it? The most important is me. Because I'm okay, you are not okay. Okay? This one? Yeah, you know. Confusing. <laughs> Fearful. God also far away. And the spirituality is also is very dysfunctional. Okay, next. And you can see in well, continue. In the relationship with the pattern, they will see. Come on. Okay. Secure attachment, if you have a good secure attachment with the parent, if your parent more religious, so you will be, be uh, if you have a religious parent, you will follow your parent. But if you are non-religious, you will less religious too. So basically secure will follow the parent. Parent spirituality. Secure attachment is the other way around. Parent religious parent, less religious, non religious parent, more religious. Next. Now my what is this? You don't need to know. I will explain. <laughs> so basically, I'm studying how. Now, I know a little bit about spirituality, relationship with God, in the relationship with love and But now I would like to know, how about if I come to the U.S., what should I do? If I have a certain way to select other people, how will I can predict my behavior in terms of Especially in other cultures. Next. Come on. 
Come on. Yeah. Here is what I find, I found. In the relationship with when people come to other cultures, so secure people will have the most easy in terms of mental model to relate with other and home cultures. Just the word like this. I am Indonesian. When I came to the US, if I am a secure pattern uh, with a with a schema secure, I will tend to maintain my identity. I am I maintain my Indonesian cultures, but at the same time, I will relate deeply with American cultures. I will relate because you are okay too. I want to learn from you. Yeah. While the fearful, no, very dangerous. I don't want to eat hamburger. <laughs> I want to eat rice and corn. Because it's so fearful. Secure is okay, I'm okay. This one is not okay. While anxious is more on the fearful. Because I'm not okay, you are okay. This means they can venture, but not as much as a secure one. Yeah. And then also, when you go to other cultures, you experience stressor, high stressor. What happened with that? You can see that. Come on, let Yeah, okay. So the same thing. Secure person with less cultures. In other words, they, they are more adaptable if you are a businessman going to China, for instance, if you have a secure uh, schema, most probably you are okay. You can ventures, you can keep your own cultures, you can back and forth, you can be by cultures. But fearful will mess up. <laughs> Anxious, a little bit mess up. <laughs> this means a little bit more better than this one. And secure, of course, the one. Through that, I don't know. I learned about spirituality. I learned about how to use science through observation, through empiricism and rationalism. Systematically, we can see and show it to the world which one is a healthy spirituality and which one is not.